the pixel art of FNAF is notoriously dog shit. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because it's not actually pixel art. Let me explain. The core rule that makes all pixel art pixel art is placing squares on a grid. You have your squares, you have your grid, bing, bam, boom, you've made a penis. It's as easy as that. So with a rule as simple to understand as that was, how did Scott Cawthon fuck it up? To make my point, here's Fredbear. Now, I don't think this is a bad sprite. In fact, I actually think it's one of the better ones in the entire FNAF series. But if we take his nose and use that as the guideline for one pixel, we could create a grid that will let us know where every other pixel should fall. Do you see the problem here? What the fuck happened? It's like Scott Cawthon started making his head and gave up immediately. Notice how the ears and the chin are barely following the grid. How the eye is half half in between two pixels and how really everything from the neck down is horrendous. And it's not just the nose. Choose any pixel as a base and you will notice that Fredbear fails to establish a grid. And therefore, this isn't pixel art. I look at this and I'm disgusted. This is like placing a block in between two other blocks in Minecraft. You can't half place a block. Well, actually you can. Slabs don't fucking count. If you look at any character sprite, any background art, fuck anything in this Atari style of FNAF pixel art, you will notice that Scott Cawthon fails to establish a grid every time. Here's another example. This is purple guy. What the fuck happened to purple guy? Why are the pixels along his head itty bitty tiny, but the pixels everywhere else are fucking massive. His eyes are falling out of his head and I have to be the only person who's noticed that the rectangle that makes up his body goes over his mouth. Once again, Scott Cawthon fails to establish a grid resulting in a sprite that just looks bad. But I know what you're gonna say. Drake, this is based off of Atari style sprites. Atari style sprites are very, very bad. Like. Have you seen E.T.? What is that? Is that his mouth? Is that his arm? That might be his cock. But even E.T. with his enlarged member still follows his own grid. Hell, everything on the Atari did in its own ugly way. So what happened? It's not like it's hard to make pixel art. Any program could do it if you scale down your canvas enough. Well, what if I told you that Scott Cawthon made his pixel art using 3DS Max, a 3D modeling and animation software. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a 2D sprite, but in fact, this is a 3D model. Allegedly. You see, there's nothing that really confirms that Scott Coffin used 3DS Max to make his pixel art, but really there's nothing that de-confirms it. He used 3DS Max for everything else. It does make sense. In fact, a lot of people use this clip of baby eating, uh, Emily? A lot of people use this clip of baby eating this girl as evidence that this is in fact a 3D model. Notice how the claw clips into itself and how really everything effortlessly tweens from one place to another. You wouldn't really see that in traditional pixel art. Well, except you can. A lot of games actually use this style of movement. They create pixel art assets and then animate them using puppet animation, and it looks pretty similar. But, you know, actually good. So I took it upon myself to make some grid-accurate sprites, and I think I did a pretty good job. I think someone more accomplished than I am could make something better, but all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with them. I also had a little fun and decided to throw my hand at what purple guy could be holding here. Could it be a wrench, another wrench, a crowbar? Maybe a dildo. The world may never know. While making these sprites, I noticed something. Mine just aren't as good. They're grid accurate, yes, but they totally failed to capture the magic of the original sprites. And so I got to thinking, maybe that's on purpose. Maybe by refusing to adhere to a grid, Scott Cawthon refuses to adhere to our expectations of what these sprites are supposed to look like. Maybe that's why they all look so ugly and uncanny and creepy. And for a horror game, that's good. Fuck, that's great, actually. So, is Scott Coffin's pixel art actually good? No, of course not. Scott Coffin can't put that much thought into his own story, let alone some sprite that probably took him 10 minutes to make. God fucking...